Thank you, Linda Kropp. You're here. You were in that video. Thank you for your introduction, Mr. Matson. Thank you for your acknowledgement. I'm honored to receive this award with my colleague and friend, Congresswoman Ross Leighton, and I'm very happy my buddy Sam Farr is here. I want to thank this foundation and, your, and its supporters for this honor and for putting on such a wonderful and important event. And as our wonderful director of NOAA said so eloquently, tonight is really bittersweet. We have a game changer on our hands. As we celebrate here, as we gather to acknowledge our oceans, to be advocates in Congress and in our nation's communities, we come with heavy hearts. We're burdened by the devastating oil spill in the Gulf that continues to threaten the ocean. We're all so committed to preserving and protecting. And as you can tell, I'm unfortunately well acquainted with, ocean, with oil spills. 41 years ago, I could see and smell firsthand the oil that spilled into the Santa Barbara Channel. That spill killed marine animals and blackened beaches. But it pales in comparison to what we're seeing now in the waters of, and the wetlands in the Gulf. In Santa Barbara, we responded with bold and decisive, decisive action. A group of professors at the University of California at Santa Barbara founded the Environmental Studies Program. It is now one of the most respected in the United States and a model for many others. The spill also inspired Senator Gaylord Nelson, who had visited Santa Barbara to create Earth Day. And it brought national attention to the fragility of the oceans, which led Congress to pass this historic legislation, CZMA, the Clean Water Act, and to create the National Marine Sanctuary Program. That, of course, led to the creation of the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary, created in 1980 to protect the area surrounding the five Channel Islands that lie off my district. And it set up a process to later form the National Marine Sanctuary Foundation 10 years ago a feat we also celebrate tonight. So in some ways, we might not be gathered here tonight if the Santa Barbara spill had not inspired Congress and the American people to act. One of the founders of UCSB's Environmental Studies Program recently said, and I quote, U.S. ocean policy innovation has been a consequence of the politics over oil resources and the impacts from oil catastrophes. This chain of environmental disaster and the response has, removed, has moved the United States through the Santa Barbara spill, the Exxon Valdez spill, and now the BP Deep Horizon spill. And that speaks to this occasion. We might all be here tonight as leaders based on past accomplishments, but it is what we're going to go forward and what we're going to do going forward that will truly define our leadership on ocean protection now. The spill in the Gulf dwarfs those in Santa Barbara and Alaska. Our response is going to have to do the same. This spill's impact is threatening to be oceanwide, and so must our response. It must go beyond even our oceans. Today, the House of Representatives passed a resolution commemorating the great Jacques Cousteau, Shortly before, yes, which we acknowledge tonight. Shortly before he died, he was asked this question, which area of pollution worries you the most? He responded, I don't make a separation. I worry about the entire system. Our way of managing the earth is wrong. How profound, but also how daunting. Everything is connected. You only have to see a picture of Earth from space to see that we are all connected to the oceans. And as Cousteau's son, Jean-Michel, puts it, the ocean is our life support system. We need to start harm stop harming it because what we do to the ocean, we do to ourselves. But thankfully, when we build sanctuaries to protect special areas in our oceans, we become protected, each of us. Each of our efforts is connected to that greater effort, and we need those efforts now more than ever. That's why I do what I do. That's why since 1969 I've fought to end the oil drilling that threatens my community. It's why in Congress 
I'm doing my part to protect and defend our oceans and the life support system they interconnect with. It's why I co-chair with Eliana, the National Marine Sanctuary Caucus. It's why I'm working on legislation to support ocean-based education for our children. And it's why I'm working with my colleagues to update the National Marine Sanctuaries Act. We're all here because we care about our oceans. We know that for them, the threats are great, and not just from this bill. Every day, we're faced with the size and scope of challenges like global warming, acidification, overfishing, pollution, and of course, oil spills. In the face of these challenges, we could be overwhelmed and disheartened. But Jacques Cousteau said, had something to say here as well. If, we're log if we were logical, he said, the future would be bleak. But we are more than logical. We are human beings, and we have faith, and we have hope, and we can work. I hope each of us does everything in our power to make sure that next year, when we gather to celebrate our ocean's heroes, that we can talk about the innovation and the environmental progress that we have made by then, because we rose up and we responded to the images and damage that flood our televisions, our minds, and our souls. I have faith. I have hope. And I plan to work. And I know that you will as well. So thank you for this wonderful honor. It means very much to me. And I'll see you next year. Thank you again. <laughs>